Hi everyone, so welcome to today's live uh, weather report. It's actually got a bit of sun at the moment, but we've got some heavy showers coming in today, sort of sleety hail showers. Um, so there's a, there's a hint of spring in the air now after a very slow start here in Yorkshire. So today, absolutely super exciting. We're gonna be talking about uh, Gilfie, super Gilfie. So she's actually laid an egg. Uh, which is absolutely great news. Uh, so we're really all here really excited. She started uh, sitting on the nest, I think it was last Friday, and she usually sits there for about three days and then she pops out an egg, uh, you know, practicing. And you can see her straining sometimes. So we were just wondering, is she getting a little bit egg bound? Uh, and then on the fourth day, she goes and pops an egg out, which is absolutely fabulous. So this is... Uh, the birds there calling, they've had a lot of interest uh, from the tawny owls in the trees. Uh, but this is Gilfie, she's been spending a lot of time like this, just settling down on the uh, nest. But this was the moment uh, just over two days ago when we get this, uh, a lot of effort going in. Uh, she's sat like that for four days, as I said, just preparing to lay. And then we get this, the light's terrible. It's not gone into infrared yet, but it's right at the end of the day, nearly nine o'clock at night. Uh, and we get uh, this first eggs come out. And uh, this is just great. So Finn's there by her side, giving her a little preen. Um, so this is just really exciting for us all here. She's about a month later, just over a month later than she was last year. So I'm going to take you back to last year so you know what to expect next. So uh, last year she was with a different male. Uh, she was with Barney last year, who was uh, you know, a long-time partner. Uh, but she's now with Finn, we lost Barney. So we've got uh, this new, new relationship. So maybe that's why she's late. Maybe it's because of the spring that we've had. It's been tremendously cold. We had 29 frosts in, in uh, April which is just literally unheard of. It was the sunniest April, the coldest April, and the driest April here. So that's not good for uh, uh, wildlife and voles and uh, you know, getting into good condition to lay a clutch of eggs. So this is looking back at last year. So as you can see there, 31st of the third, she lays her first egg and look how pristine that egg is, just fabulous. So she's laid almost in the same place in the nest, which is great for us because she's on camera. Uh, and you can see there's a vole by her side. It's very rare that we see a surplus of food in the nest this year. Um, because of there's been, you know, such a cold spring, there's no growth um, there. So uh, yes, this is uh, really, really great. So there's Barney by her side and as, uh, this is what we're sort of gonna see for quite a while. It's just, you know, another egg, possibly tomorrow. So it's round about every, just short of every three days uh, she laid an egg last time. So uh, we're gonna be hopefully looking at an egg. When's the next egg coming tomorrow? Is it Will with tomorrow, I think? I think it? tomorrow. Yeah, I'm hoping. So we're hoping tomorrow we get another egg uh, from, uh, from her there. So we're looking um, time-wise, uh, we've worked it out. It's just about half an hour short of uh, three days that she lays an egg. So uh, 71 hours approximately, 71 and a half hours she laid her eggs. Very timely last year. Um, so uh, yeah, absolutely fabulous. So last year she laid three eggs. Uh, Gilfie isn't known for doing large broods. Some barn owls can produce absolute super broods, which are quite incredible. Uh, you know, sort of up to seven, eight, nine, and even an 11 has been known for a barn owl in a really good vol years. I don't know how they managed to cover 11 eggs, but the most I've seen in an nest is seven barn owl eggs myself, because yeah, we're quite high here on the Yorkshire Wolds. Um, so they don't usually lay big broods, but Gilfie usually stops at about three. Yeah, so incubation. So we're looking at around about 32 days uh, before the eggs hatch. Last year was a little bit unusual, that only one egg out of the clutch hatched, which was solo. And uh, that was 37 days worth of incubation. But if you can imagine, that might have been the third egg laid, which explains why it was at 37 days. So last year we were starting to get worried with the 37 day mark and one of these wonderful little chicks hatched. So this is her 
just with the three eggs there, all pristine, clean, beautiful eggs. And you can see the way she holds her feet, she's very careful around these eggs. Um, but yeah, just this is what we're going to see as they're just getting up, stretching. It's only the female that will brood the eggs, the male takes no part in brooding the eggs. Uh, so she gets up, stretches, she does a little bit of a yoga every so often. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, this is what we're going to be looking forward to. A month of incubation and then the call of nature. Um, power mouths, if the box is big enough, they actually go to the toilet in the nest, which is uh, seems quite unusual to me. If you watch the tawnies, I've never ever seen the tawnies do that. They always go outside uh, to go to the toilet. So, uh, yeah, so this is... This we're going to get the food deliveries. This is Barney bringing in a bit of food. He's got a bowl here, I think. And uh, so that's the job of the male now is to provide the food uh, for the female. And Finn was really, really slow on catching on on this. Uh, Heath would take a mouse in or some food in, and then he would uh, not want to give it to Gilfie. So he would march around with his back to Gilfie, not wanting to provide the food to her, which was just completely bizarre because that's how he's got to prove in the courtship stage that he supplies food for the female and then she feels confident and comfortable she can lay a clutch of eggs. Yeah, yeah, so at the end of incubation, we're looking at 32 days and then uh, we get these super little uh, chicks coming out and they're not pretty, we have to be honest, these little barn owl chicks, tiny, tiny little uh, chick here, just hatched out of the egg and the eggs are small, smaller than a Banty's egg. Uh, so quite small little chick here we've got but they can grow at an incredible rate and uh, within a week they're sort of set up on the haunches uh, and we'll follow this development process hopefully right away through until these chicks fledge. So that's it, so exciting. We've got this first egg and we're really looking forward to seeing the second egg hopefully tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to start with a few questions uh, that have been coming through. Uh, which is, uh, Will's going to hit me with them. So thank you everyone for sending in your questions. Um, they're asking, are, basically Sylvia Bullman is saying that barn owls are stunning. Their habitat is threatened and are they on the threatened birds list? Yeah, I, th I think they are. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they are. I mean, there's, you know, they're a schedule one bird and that's for a reason uh, because uh, they are, uh, I think they'll be on the vulnerable category. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, stunning birds, and what, what they actually need is rough grassland, and we're lucky here to have some rough grassland uh, in this area because what they rely on is uh, is voles. Uh, and I always say if you look after the voles, the barn owls almost look after themselves as long as you provide the nest sites. So, uh, yeah, beautiful birds. Victoria B asks, my question is how much of barn owl behaviour is learned or is it instinctual? <laughs> I can't quite get in the head of a barn owl, but I would say most of it's instinct. Uh, we had a very unusual moment last year where we had uh, Gilfie was uh, on a second brood and her first chick, Solo, actually stayed stayed with her, with her and she actually started incubating the eggs at eight weeks old. And some of that was definitely copying uh, the female and learnt behaviour and she stayed uh, with those eggs, the young chick, right the way through till hatching. So she stayed in the nest until she was 12 weeks old. Uh, so that was really, really unusual behaviour. And some of that had to be learnt, but I think most of it's instinct. So coming on from that, the clock person is asking, any news on Solo the Egg Thief? <laughs> no, there isn't. Uh, and it would be lovely to know where she is, but she was unrung. Um, you know, because of COVID and things, we didn't do any ring ringing um, that year. So, um, yeah, so it'd be interesting. We'll, we will never know for definite if she crops up again. Uh, but, yeah, it would be fascinating to know where she is. Um, next question is, how long, how much time does it take for a barn owl to lay the second egg? Uh, so we're just looking at just short of three days. So last uh, year she laid the eggs about 71 and a half hours apart and literally within 10 or 15 minutes, I think, wasn't it, yeah, Will? Which is quite time. quite incredible that we've got, you know, down to just minutes apart, 10 or 15 minutes apart, the uh, egg lane. So what was it, Will, you give us it? It was two days, 23 hours and about half an hour. Yeah, so, so, yeah two days, yeah. 23 hours and 31 minutes. There and you the go. The other one was two <laughs> days, 23 hours and 24 minutes. So they're yeah. literally within five minutes, the incubation. Yeah, really yeah, quite incredible that. 
So, uh, yeah, let's see if it's the same time again. <laughs> so we're looking at 23 hours. 20, uh, no, two days. Two days, 23 hours, and... 24 minutes. 24 minutes-ish. <laughs> so we're hoping for the next day tomorrow. We'll work out when it is and let you know. <laughs> Um, next question is, is there any difference in how different types of owls care for their eggs and young? Uh, not particularly here in the UK. We, we don't see much difference. Uh, the female obviously lays the eggs. She does the incubation. The male provides the food and doesn't actually administer the food to young chicks. Uh, as the chicks get bigger, hit the, fee the male will actually feed sometimes direct uh, to the chicks, they come and grab the food off them. But the early stages, uh, always obviously the laying is pretty obvious. Uh, the incubation, always the female, and then the early stages of care for the young chicks is always the female. Uh, with our sort of British owls that I've been studying, if anyone else has any other inf information about owls where they live, that's uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, Jared T is asking, what are the reasons why barn owls have such a short lifespan? Oh, uh, yeah, fairly, very sort of fragile existence, really. Um, they, they obviously live, they don't obviously live, they live uh, in a band around the world. They're one of the most widespread birds um, in the world, uh, along with the osprey and the peregrine, the barn owl. They cover a big range uh, across the world. Uh, but they're, they're fragile. We're getting towards the most northern part of their range uh, here where, where we are in Yorkshire. You will get them going up into Scotland, uh, but we're on the most northern part of the range. And they, they just do, they live a fragile life. They're very dependent on vol numbers. Vol numbers, just like lemons, they go up and down, peaking and troughing. And uh, yeah, so it's, you know, we've got quite a intensive uh, agriculture here in, in the UK. Uh, and what they need is sort of rough grassland, rough pasture, um, because as grass grows, it then collapses and then creates an understory where the voles live. So they're very, very dependent on vole numbers uh, here in the UK. In other places, it can be different species that they're dependent on. Uh, I've seen barn owls in the Galapagos Islands, for instance, and uh, you know they will eat some birds there as well. So uh, yeah, it's just tremendously fragile species, really, in some respects, even though it's tremendously wi widespread as well. Nicholas Culver says, my son Riley wants to know what's the most common prey they bring back to the nest? Oh, voles, yeah. It's uh, the short-tailed vole or, or field vole. Uh, and they can be quite chunky little uh, things to provide a good meal. The second most common will be shrews, common shrews here. But each area will uh, have, um, you know, a different amount of uh, shrews bringing in compared to voles. Uh, but here, voles, second is shrews, and then wood mice is the third most popular prey item here. I'm going to try my best to pronounce this one. Schold Fieldermeels asks, how can you tell the male from the female? Yes, the difference between the male and the female uh, is not always that obvious uh, from a distance. Uh, the female has flecking down her side, which looks someone looks like they've drawn little biro marks on her side and overall she's more colored so the grays are more pronounced and the um, uh, the golden colors are more pronounced male. we've got a male this is Barney here so we've got Barney uh, there these are just printouts off the camera and then so he's uh, nice and white in uh, this area here and uh, down the flanks and the sides so you can see much grayer on the wing and more orange in color and quite often around the bo bottom of the facial disc this is Gilfie here she's got a dark trimming around the bottom of the facial disc so I'll show you quickly again so much more gray much more of the golden colors and then uh, Barney's a typical male there so he has no um, you know, even where his sort of face ends and his sort of almost like cheek start, that's quite white. And then the female, a little bit more golden. Specs on Solo there. That oh, let's get some specs. This is Solo. She was a beautiful little owl. There, yeah, you can see the flex there on her white above her feet there. So that is very much uh, a sign of a female there. You can see them really clearly there now. So you see those wonderful little fleck marks above her feet? That shows that she's a female. Perfect. Look, she's got the dark facial trimming round the disc. 
So this is sort of a guide. You know, we can get darker males, lighter females, but she's 100% a female. Beautiful whale. So that's solo. So we've just got time for one more question and then a few announcements. Uh, Jenny C. asks our final question. Have you witnessed a young male like Finn before as his behaviour is very interesting? <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it's always really uh, fascinating and amusing. It's almost like sometimes watching awkward teenagers. Uh, it's even more funny when you actually have two uh, relatively young owls. Uh, when he was starting to try and mate Gilfie, he would jump on her from the front and... Uh, a few times she actually just flew out of the nest box because uh, she just thought, I'm not, I'm not having this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, barn owls are always tremendously amusing. Uh, for people that haven't seen, he, he was in the nest box calling for days, if not weeks. And then Gilfie came in one day and he was, he was almost like taken back. He's like, oh, my God, <laughs> a female. Uh, so that's what he was calling for. But he seemed very surprised when Gilfie actually came in. And there was all, all these little awkward moments where the clashing beaks, um, you know, caught him, but almost a little bit of aggression in there as well. So, uh, yeah, quite amusing to watch those early stages of courtship. Just one final question, actually, we've had from a few people and also just come in from my mum. What were barn owls called <laughs> before we had barns? <laughs> Pass. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure on that one. Yeah, we'll have to find out. Yeah, 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 it is, yeah, yeah. So, barn owls, uh, obviously, before there were barns, would nest in uh, cliffs, uh, hollow in, hollows in trees, which we had a lot more of. Um, yeah, so before there were barns, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to look into that. But just yeah. a couple of announcements before we finish. Yeah, yeah, so we've got some big announcements. Uh, so, we just want to thank all of our followers on uh, Facebook. We've got up to 300,000 uh, followers now on Facebook, which is just like incredible. That's a lot of people. And then YouTube, we're just just about 20 people short of uh, 195,000 people. And, you know, we're absolutely uh, delighted how it's going. And we're going to keep sharing these videos with you. And if you keep sharing them with your friends, uh, we'll be able to bring you more and more sort of content and more cameras, more wildlife, basically, which is uh, a winner for us all because we, uh, you know, we love to be able to share these magical moments of uh, the wildlife, you know, from these early courtship stages right the way through to the uh, chicks fledging, whether it be the barn owls, tawny owls, kestrels. Uh, and we're following the, starting to follow the stoats in the garden again now. She's got young. And uh, others, other ones, what else have I got to say, Will? Oh, yeah. It's about our stoat. It's about our stoat, yeah, yeah. So we've had uh, over 1,600 votes, and we've got an official announcement that her name is now Hazel. So 600 of you uh, voted for Hazel. I think I, fierce, I think I like myself, but I think Hazel it is. You voted, so uh, uh, it's a sweet name, so she's now called Hazel. So, uh, yeah, we'll be bringing you some information about her and how she's getting on she's hidden away at the moment but we know where she is in the garden so we've got a camera on the outside following her antics but we're hoping to get more uh, on her very very tricky animals to to film and to study uh, but we know where she is and we're going to bring you some uh, footage of that in the next couple of weeks and our next poll will be next poll yeah yeah the next poll is the name for the tawny owls in uh, Ashwood, two eggs they're on at the moment. They're sticking at two eggs. Her first clutch had three eggs. That was disrupted by squirrels. So you can imagine she was nesting up here. Her squirrel was down here. And the squirrel actually ate through the hollow of the tree. And the eggs went down through the hollow of the tree. Because uh, the squirrels aren't daft, really. They know how to uh, uh, get the upper hand sometimes. People have asked me, who would win a squirrel or a tawny owl and it's all to do with tactics you know i've seen i've seen tawny owls winning and i've seen squirrels winning and i have once seen um a tawny owl with a quite a large dead squirrel in its talons uh, that it actually caught so uh, yeah but squirrels are you know they're quite persistent and uh, we just hope they stay away from our tawnies at ashwood now so do send in your suggestions and we'll be starting a poll as soon as we've got enough names to choose from yeah, cheers. Well, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.